Hello, welcome to the module 10 of the course on application of spectroscopic methods in molecular structure determination. We will take this as a tutorial session. We will try to solve some structural illustration problems using proton NMR and carbon 13 NMR spectral data. We will also have a look at how the data is presented when it is presented in the numerical form and also when it is presented in the spectral form. Before we start the session, I suggest that you take a printout of the chemical shift values and coupling constant value tables for the proton NMR and the chemical shift value charts for the carbon 13 NMR as a handy reference in front of you so that you can refer to it when the problem solving session is going on. This is how you familiarize yourself with the various chemical shift values of different protons and carbons and the various coupling constant values of a proton NMR spectrum. Let us start with the first problem. The NMR proton NMR data is given for a very simple molecule with a molecular formula C5H12O2. Molecular formula gives very important information regarding the degree of unsaturation or the number of double bonds that are being present in the molecule. Now this particular molecular formula suggests that it is a saturated compound with the double bond equivalence of 1, sorry double bond equivalence of 0. <coughs> The proton NMR data is given. The 4.1 delta ppm, a singlet of 6 hydrogen can only mean that this, carb this particular proton is attached to a carbon containing a heteroatom like oxygen. Since oxygen is present in the molecular formula, we can come to the conclusion that the 4.1 ppm signal of 6 hydrogen intensity implies that there are two methoxy groups. So we consider two methoxy functional group as part of the structural elucidation solution. Then comes the next chemical shift value of 1.8. This is much smaller chemical shift value and it consists of 6 hydrogens of singlet. This can only imply that there are two methyl groups attached to the same carbon. In other words, a gem dimethyl group bearing a attached to a carbon is the group that is responsible for this particular, uh, ref particular resonance at 1.8 ppm of 6 hydrogen intensity. Now if you add up these numbers of carbons and hydrogen and the oxygen that is present in the fragments that we have elucidated, it corresponds to the molecular formula. So the problem is essentially solved. The structure of the simple organic molecule is that it is a dimethyl acetal of acetone. So once you have the structure ready, you can confirm that there is no unsaturation in this particular molecule and the two methoxy groups corresponds to the 4.1 delta ppm uh, singlets of 6 hydrogen and these two methyl groups which are the gem dimethyl groups for example corresponds to the 1.8 ppm of singlet of 6 hydrogen intensity. Let us move on to the next problem. Now here the proton NMR data is given. From the molecular formula which is C5H10O, we come to the conclusion there is one double bond in this molecule because C5H12 should have been the saturated molecular formula but it is C5H10, two hydrogens are deficient. Therefore the double bond equivalence is one here. Now if you carefully look at the proton NMR data, 5.95, 5.1 and 4.95, they seem to be mutually coupled hydrogens of the type olefinic hydrogens because the chemical shift values seem to indicate that they are olefinic hydrogen and the pattern namely the doublet of a doublet, doublet of a doublet, doublet of a doublet seem to indicate that they are mutually coupled to each other. In addition to that if you look at the J values which are the coupling constant value, a J value of 16 actually is a fairly large value for the coupling constant. This would only mean that there is a trans kind of a double bond present in this molecule and a 7.6 coupling would correspond to roughly a cis kind of a double, double two hydrogens being cis to each other in a double bonded system. So from the data of 5.95, 5.1 and 4.95 taken together it implies only a mono substituted olefinic derivative like this where you will have a trans coupling, a cis coupling and a geminal coupling corresponding to the 16 hertz, 7.6 hertz and 1.5 hertz. The 1.5 hertz small coupling corresponds to the sp2 geminal hydrogen coupling which is the smallest among the three coupling constants that you have in this particular fragment. Then let us go and identify what is this 2.2 singlet 1 hydrogen of D2O exchange. The D2O exchangeable hydrogens are very special hydrogens in the uh, NMR data and they would imply that the hydrogen is attached to a highly electronegative atom. 
directly and these are exchangeable hydrogen that is why the D2O addition actually exchanges that particular hydrogen and the signal vanishes in the NMR spectrum. So from the molecular formula we know that this molecule contains one uh, oxygen so most likely the oxygen is attached to a hydrogen on one side and the OH group is what is responsible for this particular signal at 2.2 which is an exchangeable hydrogen. <coughs> so once again this 1.2 ppm signal of singlet of 6 hydrogen would only mean a gem dimethyl group connected to a carbon. So if you put all these fragments together we come to the conclusion that this compound can only be this particular pro dimethyl propargyl sorry dimethyl uh, allyl alcohol is the structure of the compound which is consistent with the data that is given. Once you arrive at the structure you can always go back and see whether the structure that has been arrived at matches or satisfies the spectroscopic data that is given. In this particular problem you have three hydrogens of olefinic type and you have three signals in the olefinic region starting from 4.95 to 5.95 and you also have the trans coupling, cis coupling and the geminal coupling corresponding to the large J value of 16 a medium J value of 7.6 and a small J value of 1.5. So this particular resonance which contains both the trans coupling as well as the cis coupling would only correspond to this particular hydrogen HC which has a trans coupling and the cis coupling. So the HC comes at 5.9 ppm. The second signal at 5.1 consists of a trans coupling and a geminal coupling and the trans coupling and the geminal coupling only would mean the HA hydrogen which has a trans coupling and a geminal coupling. Finally, HB comes at 4.95 with a cis coupling and a geminal coupling. So HB is cis with respect to HC and it is geminal with respect to HA. So this data is satisfying this particular structural fragment. D2O exchangeable OH is there and the gem dimethyl group is also there at 1.2 which corresponds to this fragment. So most likely this particular structure is the correct structure that satisfies the data that is given. <coughs> In problem number 3, the molecular formula corresponds to C6H12O2 and the degree of unsaturation is 1 in this particular molecule. Now if you look at this particular information namely 1.92 ppm, a 9 line intensity pattern with appropriate intensities of J appropriate intensity and the J value of 7.2 implies that there are 8 adjacent hydrogen adjacent to this particular CH group. This is a 1 hydrogen intensity so it should be a CH group and there are 8 adjacent uh, hydrogens to this CH group which are vicinal to the CH group that we have. The only possible structural unit that would satisfy this particular data is this particular structural fragment namely the isobutyl group and the red hydrogen is the one that corresponds to the signal at 1.92 and it is surrounded by two methyl group and a methylene group totally there are eight hydrogens which are vicinal hydrogen and these hyd hydrogens essentially split this red hydrogen into a nine line pattern of appropriate intensity with the J value corresponding to an average J value of about 7.2 hertz as the J value for this hydrogens coupled to the red hydrogen here. So this is the structural unit that is consistent with this. Once you have this structural unit you can also extrapolate that this CH2 should be this particular signal at 3.85 of 2 hydrogen intensity because it has the same coupling constant as 7.2 so they are coupling partners. 3.85 suggests that the CH2 should be attached to an oxygen because oxygen is present in the molecular formula. Such a large chemical shift value of 3.85 would only mean that this is an either an ester or an ether kind of a CH2. <coughs> and then if you look at these two methyl groups which are gem dimethyl group that should appear as a doublet because of the adjacent red hydrogen. We do have a doublet which is at 0.9 ppm of 6 hydrogen intensity again with the same coupling constant. So putting all this information together we come to the conclusion that this particular fragment namely OCH2 CH, CH3 twice is the group that is responsible for the data that is given. There is one data still left out which is 2.0 of 3 hydrogen intensity. There is still one oxygen and two carbons and one uh, three hydrogens are left in the molecular formula. In other words if you subtract this particular fragment from the molecular formula you come up with the group which is an acetyl group. Two 
ppm to 2.5 ppm singlet 3 hydrogen most of the time implies that you have an acetyl group or a aromatic CH3 kind of a group is present. This is the characteristic region for the aromatic CH3 or a COCH3 kind of a group that is present in this compound. This molecule is not an aromatic molecule. You can see from the NMR that there are no aromatic hydrogen. So most likely the two <laughs> ppm signal with a 3 hydrogen intensity only corresponds to an acetyl group and it also takes care of the double bond equivalence and another oxygen in the molecular formula. So putting all these fragments together, the structure of the molecule most likely is that it is an isobutyl acetate as the structure of the compound that we have elucidated. It is a fairly simple structure. The idea here is to illustrate the point that when you have a nine line pattern intensity, that pattern recognition is extremely important. Once you recognize the pattern, you should be able to translate this into a structural information, which is this particular fragment that is the isobutyl group is responsible for this kind of a uh, this kind of a pattern that is present in the NMR spectrum. Let us move on to the next problem. Again a proton NMR spectral data is given. The molecular formula is C8H6O and the double bond equivalence here corresponds to six double bond equivalent. In other words there are six double bonds or equivalent to six unsaturation is present in this particular molecule. If you look at 9.8 singlet as one hydrogen signal, this will only be a aldehyde functional group because between 9 and 10.5 or so, it is a very characteristic region for the aldehyde groups to come. So there is an aldehyde group present in this particular molecule. Then if you look at 7.5 ppm doublet of a doublet with 8 and 2 hertz couplings that are present and 7.4 a doublet of j is equal to 2. 6.9 a doublet of j is equal to 8 all of them are one, all of them are one hydrogen intensity this would only mean that you have an aromatic skeleton with three hydrogens because of the integration 1 1 and 1 for these three signals it is a tri substituted aromatic compound one can also figure out the substitution pattern from the coupling constant this is an ortho coupling there must be an ortho two hydrogens adjacent to each other in this uh, aromatic skeleton that corresponds to the ortho coupling and two corresponds to a meta coupling. So there should be two hydrogens which are ortho to each other and one hydrogen meta to the other two hydrogen. <coughs> so this structural unit essentially satisfies the spectral data in the aromatic region. If you look at the red hydrogen, it has a ortho coupling partner of about 8 hertz of uh, uh, coupling constant. And this has uh, blue hydrogen also has the 8 hertz coupling partner as well as the 2 hertz coupling partner which is the meta coupling partner. So the 7.5 delta value corresponds to the blue and the 6.9 corresponds to the red and finally the 7.4 corresponds to the magenta colored uh, hydrogen in this particular molecule. Now the 6.02 hydrogen intensity of singlet would only be a di substituted methylene group. Since there are oxygens present in this molecule, it can only be a di oxygen substituted. In other words, a methylene dioxy group is what is present in this molecular in this molecule. The molecular formula is now satisfied with all these fragments. You take the aldehyde and the OCH2O group as well as this C3 uh, sorry C6H3 fragment if you take it. There are three substituents which are supposed to be present. You can presume one of the substituent is an aldehyde substituent and there are two oxygens which have still one valency left and that could satisfy X and Y for example. So using all this fragment information one arrives at the structure of this compound as a methylene dioxide derivative of benzaldehyde. Now the degree of unsaturation is accounted like this. The aromatic ring will have one unsaturation for the ring structure and there are three double bonds. So totally an aromatic ring of phenyl type constitutes the unsaturation of four. Then you have an aldehyde functional group which constitutes an unsaturation of one. The methylene dioxy unit, this ring system for example, the dioxygen ring system that constitutes another unsaturation. So there is double bond equivalent six is also satisfied in this manner. Now this is another way of looking at the spectrum. Whenever a research or do, is doing the research, he is not going to get the spectral data as it is presented in the numerical fashion like this. What he is going to get of course is a spectrum from the NMR spectrometer and one needs to extract the information of coupling constants and the J, uh, chemical shift values from the spectral data to be able to present this in this particular format. 
So if you take this spectrum, have a, have a look at the spectrum in this region. This is a typical aromatic region between eight, six, uh, sorry, seven and eight ppm in the proton NMR spectrum. You can tell here this this is a hundred megahertz proton NMR spectrum recorded in a chloroform solution, which is a deuterate chloroform solution. Now the deuterated solvent is used for recording the NMR. Now this pattern is a very characteristic pattern for a A A prime B B prime pattern kind of a system. So one can assume that this is either an AB type of a pattern or an AA prime BB prime kind of a pattern of four hydrogen intensity. So it is most likely a para di substituted aromatic derivative. This pattern recognition and relating it to a para di substituted derivative is extremely crucial for solving the structure of this particular compound. <coughs> Now then you come to the aliphatic region around 2.5 ppm there is a singlet of 3 hydrogen intensity. This 3 hydrogen intensity corresponds to a methyl group. The methyl group is either directly attached to the aromatic ring or it is attached to a carbonyl group and then attached to the aromatic ring. Now this is a disubstituted derivative. So from the molecular formula one can assume that the chlorine is one of the substituents that is present in the aromatic ring of this uh, structure. Now let us look at the proton NMR data which is extracted out of the spectrum that is shown here. 7.9 and 7.3 are approximate chemical shift values of this AB pattern. I have mentioned it as AB pattern because it looks like an AB pattern with four big lines that are seen here. However, this is actually an AA prime, BB prime kind of a pattern with a chemical, so with a chemical shift values of 7.9 and 7.3 and a coupling constant which is the JAB is roughly 8 hertz or so in this particular case and 2.6 corresponds to a singlet of 3 hydrogen intensity. Luckily in this particular spectrum the intensity signals in, intensities of the various signals are given in terms of the number of protons that are present underneath these signals. This corresponds to 2 hydrogen, this corresponds to 2 hydrogen, this corresponds to 3 hydrogen. Totally there are 7 hydrogens in the molecular formula. All the 7 hydrogens are taken into account by this integration. Coming to the carbon 13 spectrum, if we look at the left hand side of the spectrum around 200 ppm, there is a signal, a very small signal which is a singlet. This is the, off, the top trace is the off resonance spectrum and the bottom trace is a normal gated, uh, normal broadband decoupled spectrum. So there is no coupling information in the bottom spectrum whereas there is coupling information of the kind the directly attached hydrogen coupling is represented in this particular spectrum. So this essentially indicates that this carbonyl functional group is not an aldehyde because if it were to be an aldehyde it would have been a doublet signal here. The CH would have uh, split the carbon signal into a doublet. Since this is remaining as a singlet in the off resonance spectrum also, this is likely to be a ketone. Since we concluded this could be a COCH3, that is sort of confirmed by this presence of this particular signal being a singlet signal corresponding to a ketonic kind of a signal. The para di substituted derivative which we concluded based on the AA prime BB prime pattern should have <coughs> uh, four types of uh, carbons in the aromatic unit. It is unsymmetrically para di substituted, so there should be four types of carbon. Two of the carbons are quaternary carbons. You can see here the two small signals which remain as singlet in the off resonance also corresponds to the ipso carbons where the substituents are present. Then two other signals are seen. It is not very well resolved in the spectrum. The almost two overlapping signal is what is seen and that appears to be, each of them appears to be a doublet in the off resonance spectrum. So there are two CH carbons and two quaternary carbons in the aromatic ring corresponding to a para di substituted skeleton. Finally, this methyl group is appearing in the carbon 13 spectrum. The carbon is appearing around 27 ppm or so as a singlet. In the off resonance spectrum, it is a quartet. It is not a beautiful quartet that you would normally see. It is sort of a distorted quarter. It is quartet. Usually in the off resonance spectrum, the signals can be highly distorted. This is one such example of a distorted quartet is what is seen here. So let us now, this data is now read, written in this particular fashion. From this we are going to solve the structure of this molecule. Degree of unsaturation is 5. Chlorine is present there. So you need to add one hydrogen instead of the chlorine. So that would be C8H8. For a saturated molecular formula, it should have been C8H18. And the deficiency of 10 hydrogen corresponds to a double bond equivalence of 5. 
Now this we already discussed 7.9 and 7.3 as well as the carbon signal seem to indicate this kind of a paradise substituted derivative. One of the substituent is chlorine, you can confirm that for example. And the other substituent if you just subtract the C6H4 and the Cl from the molecular formula, the other substituent is an acetyl substituent. Acetyl substituent has the signature in terms of the NMR signal at 2.6 and also these two signals in the carbon 13 spectrum namely for the CO. 198 ppm signal and the CH3 27 ppm of quartet is essentially confirming the presence of an acetyl group. So, putting all this information together, we arrive at the structure of parachloroacetophenone for this particular structural uh, particular spectral data. Once you arrive at the structure, it is always better to go back and check whether the structure is consistent with the data that is being presented just to confirm and cross check once again whether this data satisfies the spectral data, the structure satisfies the spectral data. Now this is a compound with the molecular formula of C7H11NO. Now what is important in this spectrum, this is a proton NMR spectrum, this particular pattern one should be able to recognize with some practice. Now the signals that is shown here around 2 to 3 ppm, this small signal is expanded and zoomed to show that there is a symmetrical pattern with respect to the center of the spectrum here. In other words, such a symmetrical pattern can only be due to an AA prime, BB prime kind of a spin system, 4 spin system is what is being present in this case. Let us also confirm that the integration corresponds to 4. Let us start at the left end of the spectrum of the proton NMR. Somewhere around 9.5 ppm there is a singlet and then the carbon 13 also there is a peak around 220 ppm sorry 205 ppm or so and this signal is split into a doublet in the off resonance spectrum. That would mean that this particular signal corresponds to an aldehyde signal. Only an aldehyde signal can appear as a doublet in the carbon 13 spectrum in the off resonance spectrum. So the proton NMR data around 9.5 a singlet and this doublet here in the off resonance spectrum essentially confirms the presence of a aldehyde functional group. So before we go into that, let us say that this particular data corresponds to the 2.5 ppm and 1.9 ppm approximate chemical shifts which are the centers of the multiplets that is seen is about A A prime B B prime pattern of 4 hydrogen intensity. This is 4 hydrogen intensity because this would correspond to 1 hydrogen intensity because it is an aldehyde. So this is 2 hydrogen intensity from here to here and another 2 hydrogen intensity from here to here. So this part of the multiplet corresponds to 2 hydrogen intensity B B primes side of the A A prime B B prime pattern. On the left hand side, on the right hand side you have the A A prime pattern which is corresponding to 2 hydrogen intensity. So totally 4 hydrogen intensity essentially satisfies the fact that this should be a 4 spin system. In the aliphatic region such a 4 spin system can come only if it is a CH2 CH2 doubly substituted ethylene group is present. In other words X CH2 CH2 Y kind of a fragment is responsible for this structural feature in the molecule. Now there is a singlet around 1.1 ppm or so, 1.2 ppm and this is 6 hydrogen intensity. If this is 4 hydrogen intensity then you can easily figure out that this is corresponding to a 6 hydrogen intensity and this could probably a gem dimethyl kind of a group. We will see what is the structural feature of this particular molecule. <coughs> now in the carbon 13 you have a CHO group which is a doublet which is around 209 ppm. Around 120 there is a singlet. So this is a very unique signal. This could be either due to aromatic but there are no aromatic hydrogens in the proton NMR so it is unlikely to be aromatic. This can also be olefinic but then there are no olefinic protons in the NMR spectrum, proton NMR spectrum so it is unlikely to be a olefinic carbon. The only other kind of carbon that can come in this region is a cyano kind of a carbon. So this molecule may be containing a cyano functional group. The presence of nitrogen also seems to suggest that such a functional group is not unlikely in this particular uh, molecule. Now this multiplet that is seen here, this is essentially because of the solvent CdCl3, it is appearing as a 3 equally intense lines which is a triplet kind of a system is what we have corresponding to the deuterium splitting of the carbon of the CdCl3. Now since we mentioned there are two methylene groups, 
in the off-resonance spectrum, if you look at, there should be two triplets. There are in fact two triplets in the off-resonance spectrum and this gem dimethyl group should have a quartet. In fact, there is a quartet that is present. If this is a gem dimethyl group, which is a tetra substituted quaternary carbon, that quaternary carbon also appears around 40. 5 ppm or so in the carbon 13 spectrum. So, we have this spectral information extracted out of the spectral picture in this case. So, let us try to now solve the structure. Degree of unsaturation based on the molecular formula is 3. Nitrogen is present, it is a trivalent element. So, one has to add one hydrogen to the molecular formula that would make it a C7H12. For the saturated compound, it should be C7H18. So, since there are 6 hydrogens deficient in the molecule, the degree of unsaturation is 3. Now, the 9.5 corresponds to an aldehyde functional group. We already discussed this around 205 ppm in the NMR, carbon 13 NMR. The 2.5 and 1.9 pattern A, A prime pattern, B prime pattern can only be a CH2, CH2 group of this type and that is also confirmed by two triplets that are appearing around 32 until 12 ppm in the off-resonance spectrum. There is a gem dimethyl group. So, if you put all these fragments together and subtract it from the molecular formula, what is left with is the cyano functional group. In fact, the molecule structure can be either structure 1 or structure 2. Structure 2 can be easily ruled out as a possibility because the aldehyde is attached to a CH2. So, the hydrogen of the aldehyde would have been split into a triplet by the CH2 hydrogens, which is not the case. The proton NMR 9.5 is actually a singlet and this structure essentially would give a singlet aldehyde functional group and this would be the most likely structure. Therefore, the structure 2 is inconsistent with the data of the singlet 9.5 signal. If it had been a triplet 9.5 signal, we would have supported this particular structure. So, one can rule out alternative structures based on the structural, uh, based on the spectroscopic data that is given. Therefore, the structure is most likely to be 1 for this particular compound. I hope we had a exposure of how to solve the structures based on different types of uh, pattern that we see in the NMR spectrum. Let us look at this particular st uh, uh, spectra. This is the proton NMR and this is the carbon 13 NMR spectrum. Molecular formula is given here C12, H14 and O is the molecular formula. Now, what is important in this particular spectrum is the recognition of this particular signal here which appears like a 5 line signal. Normally, this would be mistaken for a quintet, but then for a 1 hydrogen intensity and a doublet of 6 hydrogen intensity, this is if this is a 1 hydrogen intensity this would correspond to 6 hydrogen intensity and these two signals are mutually coupled. You can tell from the spacing of the lines. This coupling constant here is essentially same as the coupling constant here. So, these are mutually coupled. A doublet of 6 hydrogen intensity can only be an isopropyl group. So, if this is an isopropyl group, this would have been actually a 7 line pattern. Unfortunately, the first line and the last line which are very less intense line are not seen in the spectrum. That is how the spectrum, that is why the spectrum looks like a quintet. So, one can easily misunderstand the spectrum by considering this to be a quintet, but then that will not match with the integration of 1 hydrogen and 6 hydrogen. If it were to be 1 hydrogen, 6 hydrogen, this 6 hydrogen will split this into a 7 line pattern and this 1 hydrogen will split the dimethyl group into a doublet, which is a 2 line pattern here. So, let us go to the aromatic region. In the aromatic region, looks like there is a part of an AB quartet which is chopped off from the rest of the spectrum. This is a, this is, there is a roof effect kind of a thing you can see, une, une, unequal intensity distribution is what you have. And this integration here suggests that this par part of the integration is essentially same as this part of the integration. If this is for one hydrogen, this also should have been for one hydrogen. So, where is the coupling partner of this particular doublet? it is sort of merged into the aromatic multiplet here. You can see here one line of the doublet, the other line is merged with the aromatic multiplet. If you take the integration, overall integration from this point to this point here, this would correspond to essentially 7 hydrogen intensity and this is 6 hydrogen intensity here. If you subtract this 1 hydrogen intensity, the rest would be a 6 hydrogen intensity. Of the 6 hydrogen, you cannot have a 6 hydrogen intensity in the aromatic region if it is a mono substituted aromatic compound. So, that also seems to indicate that coupling partner of this particular doublet is merged along with aromatic hydrogens and that is why the aromatic integration appears to be 6 hydrogen integration. So, one can simply say that this is a multiplet 
between 7.3 and 7. We don't analyze this multiplet. It is a fairly complex multiplet, except to recognize there are six hydrogen intensity corresponding to the merging of one of the signals under this particular multiplet. Then a doublet is present with 16 hertz. Again, a large coupling constant for the trans kind of a coupling. So there is a double bond in this molecule, which corresponds to a trans double bond. Then you have an isopropyl group. Now, if you look at the septet of the isopropyl group, this should have been connected to a carbonyl or directly to an aromatic functional group because the chemical shift value of about 2.9 or so seem to suggest that this corresponds to a COCH or an aromatic CH kind of a substitution pattern is what is being present. Let us look at the carbon-13. Carbon-13, the values are conveniently printed. So I just uh, took the values and sorted out the numbers on the right hand side. So this is the data we extract from the spectrum. The degree of unsaturation for this molecule is 6. And based on the isopropyl, uh, based on the septet and the doublet, we conclude that there is an isopropyl group. The chemical shift value of 2.9 seem to indicate there is a carbonyl functional group. And that is corroborated with the carbon-13 spectrum, a peak are appearing around 2 point, sorry, 203 ppm, 203 ppm, suggests that there is a carbonyl functional group. And the two gem dimethyl groups appear at 18.4. And this methane hydrogen CH hydrogen carbon appears around 39.1 in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So this data is consistent with an isopropyl ketone. Now 6.85 of 16 hertz coupling it indicative of a trans alkene. So 7.3 to 7.5 could only be a mono substituted aromatic ring with the missing alkene which is the coupling partner for this signal that is being present. There is an accidental merger of the signals in the aromatic region. So these two fragments are identified from the data that is presented here. A trans disubstituted double bond which corresponds to this part of the double bond hydrogen is shown here. The other hydrogen is merged with the aromatic system here. So putting all these fragments together, you can arrive at, at this particular structure. This is a isopropyl phenylethenyl ketone is the structure of the compound. The Now you can see the trans double bond th corresponding to this particular double bond being a trans geometry. You have a 16 hertz coupling which satisfies. And this hydrogen at 6.85 corresponds to the alpha hydrogen, not the beta hydrogen. The beta hydrogen will have a higher chemical shoot value and that is why it is merging with the aromatic signal. If you look at carefully in this NMR spectrum, this corresponds to the alpha hydrogen of the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This corresponds to the beta hydrogen. The part of the spectrum is seen here as a doublet merging with aromatic signal here. So we solve the structure of this molecule also. It's a fairly simple molecule. The NMR's pattern essentially implies this particular structure to be the structure, correct structure for the data. So what we have done in this particular uh, tutorial session is looked at very simple organic molecules, looked at the carbon-13 and proton data, tried to interpret the data to the structural fragments which are familiar in terms of the pattern recognition, in terms of the chemical shift value recognition and the coupling constant value recognition. Hope you understood the concept of logically deducing the structure from the given data fragment by fragment and putting the fragments together at the end. Once the fragments are put together in the form of a molecule, you go back and check whether the spectral data is matching with the structure that we elucidate. Thank you very much for your attention.